بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد الحمد لله we have finished this first chapter here today inshallah we'll finish it we're coming to the end of this first chapter fi rawdatul uqala wa nuzhatul fudala this book is speaking about the fadl and the ni'mah and the greatness of al-aql of the intellect of sound understanding that's the intention of the author this first chapter that we've taken قال ابن حبان البسطي رحمه الله ذكر الحث على لزوم العقل وصفة العقل اللبيب We want to understand the murad of the mu'allif We want to understand the intent of the one who's writing the book What does he want from this chapter and his benefit what he intends from this chapter لزوم العقل That you always stay in that which is Based on sound, understanding, and intelligence. It's not sometimes you can follow that which is correct. But sometimes you follow your desires. And you do whatever you want to do. And we explain that mankind is either following his aql and doing that what makes sense based on the Quran and the Sunnah. And if he's not doing that, then he's following his desires. He's following his desires. وَصِفَةَ الْعَقْلِ الْلَّبِيبَ مَا مَعْنَى الْلَّبِيبَ What's the plural for lub? Yeah, Sammy. Lub. What's the plural? Al-bab. For Allah says in the Quran, al-bab, the people of uqul, people who have intelligence. Who is Ulul Al-Bab? Allah refers to the believers with this description. Mm. Now what we want to do, we want to look at this last statement of uh, Ibn Hibban in this chapter that we're in. As he explains what Al-Aql is. Okay. He says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Al-Aql ismun yaqa'u ala al-ma'rifati بالسلوك السواب والعلم باجتناب الخطأ. العقل is a name is used for knowing correct conduct and knowledge for avoiding that which is wrong. No, it's a, it's, it's a word that's used for what? Knowing the correct conduct and how to act according to things. Also for knowing how to stay away from that which is Harmful, and that which is wrong. Well, aql has these three components. Three components. One is not as knowledge, but knowledge of that which is good can act according to it, and knowledge of that which is haram and that which is harmful, so you can avoid it. This is what aql is. Now, we want to look. There's four ayat in the Quran. We want to look at them. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the believers, He calls them. In the Quran, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, calls us by iman. Sometimes Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nas. Allah says, O mankind. Sometimes Allah calls the Jews and the Christians, says, Ya ahl al kitab. Naam. Sometimes He says, Ya bani Israel. Ta'ayyam. Four ayahs, Allah says, Ya ulil al bab. Naam. But now, let's go back. We said that al-lub, al-aql, intelligence is connected to what? Knowledge of knowing that which is good so you can embark upon it and implement it and also knowledge of knowing that which is wrong so you could what? Stay away from it. That is the person that is intelligent. That's the one that's intelligent. Let's look at the context of these ayahs that Allah calls us ulul al One we have already taken previously. What's the ayat we already took in previously that Allah calls the people Ulul Albab? Ya Ulul Albab. Qul la yastawi al khabithu wa tayyibu wa law a'jabaka kathratul khabith. 
and say it's not the same. That which is khabif, that which is repulsive and ugly, and that which is tayyip and that which is good. Even if you like a lot of filth and ugliness, it's not the same. Even if you like it, fattaqullaha ya ulil albab. So fear Allah, O oh you who have intelligence. Now, contemplate on this, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and He's calling you by your aql. It's not the same. Even if you like it, even if you follow your desires, and you really love it, it's not the same. So use your intelligence. Fear Allah, ulil albab. So this is something that the people of intelligence, they have over everybody else. They, they use the intelligence and they fear Allah. They have taqwa. For Allah, Allah says at the end of the ayat, "La alakum tuflihun," so that you may be successful. The second, let's look at another ayat. is in Surah Talaq. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Let's go back. Let's understand that aql naam zakhla khairan. Al aql is knowledge, good, so you could do it. Knowledge of evil and that which is bad, so you can stay away from it." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. Allah prepared for them a severe punishment. Talking about the disbelievers and how He destroyed them. Allah prepared for them an evil punishment. Ah, consider this. Ah. So, fair Allah, oh, you have intelligence, you have intellect. Do you all know what common sense is? Do you know what sound understanding is? Allah is saying, we destroyed them because of their disobedience. He's explaining what they was upon. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا This is a sifa. This is a description specifically for the mu'min. أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Those who have sound intelligence is specifically for the mu'min, for the believer. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us by this description. We should be embarrassed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call us by aql and then we not act according to it. Allah calls you ulul albab, calls you al labib, and then you tatsarraf bighayr al labib. Bighayr al labib. Allah calls you by this description. It should be heavy on us that Allah calls us by this and then we act with other than it. Allah in this verse says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا So fear Allah, O oh you who have sound understanding from those who believe. قَدْ أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكُمْ ذِكْرًا رَسُولًا Allah has sent to you all ذِكْرًا You're different from everybody else. Don't act like everybody else. Allah is talking to you. He's talking to you. Hadil khitab, this is a nida, Allah is calling you. So fear Allah, O oh you who have understanding from those who believe, Qad anzal Allahu ilaykum. Allah has sent to you dhikran. You, you know, it, you, it's not suitable that you act like everybody else. Rasulan, and this dhikran, this reminder, it's the messenger of Allah. You all have the messenger of Allah. They don't have anything. What do they have for guidance? What do the disbelievers out there have to explain for them what is halal and what is haram, what is wajib, what is mustahab? قَدْ أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكُمْ ذِكْرًا Allah has sent to you a reminder. Rasulan. And for all these ayats that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us by this description. All people of intellect is connected with good and connected with bad. Look at this ayat, barakallahu feekum. She saw it al Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Walakum fil qisasi hayatun. Ya ulil al babi la alakum tatakum. And you have in qisas. Qisas is capital punishment. A life for a life. When somebody kills somebody, they kill somebody else. But Allah says, You have all in qisas. You have in capital punishment. He didn't say death. You have death. Maqal al Al-hayat. You have in life, killing a, a life for a life. What do you have in? You have death? No, you have life. By instituting this ruling, by instituting this sharia, by carrying out this punishment from Allah, you're going to have life. Na'am. The people are going to stop killing. Na'am. 
walakum fil qisas what is qisas ibrahim what is qisas what is qisas ya capital punishment that if somebody kills somebody what is the punishment he gets killed nah that he gets killed walakum fil qisas you have incapable punishment allah doesn't say you have death you have life You have living. Someone's going to live when you when you carry this out. You're not going to have that. Why? Because people are going to say, "Oh, this is serious." Naam. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ It says, "وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِصَاصِ حَيَاتٌ لَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you might have taqwa. This is going to encourage you to fear Allah. This is going to encourage you to fear Allah. So these are the ayats that Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions it. باقي آية سورة البقرة الله سبحانه وتعالى says وما تفعل من خير يعلمه الله that what you do from good let's go back let's go back let's go back العقل has three things knowledge good so you could do it knowledge evil stay away from it الله سبحانه وتعالى says وما تفعل من خير يعلمه الله and that what you do from good deeds Allah knows it What does Allah do? You know, get provisions. Go out and get provisions and things that you need. So in the khayr zad taqwa, the best thing that you can gather up. People can gather up food. They can gather up money. They can gather up possessions. What does Allah do? And you gather up food. This is connected to Hajj. Those people is going to Hajj and they didn't bring on possessions with them. Naam. In the Yemen, they was going to Hajj and they end up asking for. For food, and they didn't bring they didn't bring food with them. Allah says, "For tazawadu, bring provisions with you. Gather up provisions. For in the khayr zad at taqwa, the best provision that you could gather up is taqwa, mean doing what you're commanded and staying away from that which you have been prohibited from. What taqooni ya ulil albab, therefore fear me, all you who have taqwa." قل قرأنا قرأنا بارك الله فيك الآن يا إخوتي في الله every time you increase in knowledge the more you can use your عقل the more you can use your internet your your intellect نعم every time your knowledge is 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 decreased you you only have certain such options to use your intelligence the more knowledge you have the more of a عقل that you have the more لبيب أنت عقل The more knowledge that you have, I imagine somebody who didn't study the salah and somebody who did study the salah. Somebody who did study salah, he knows he could start the salah with saying Allahumma ba'id baini wa bain khataya, or sometimes he could say Alhamdulillah, hamdun kathira, tayyiban mubarakan fi, or sometimes he could say Allahu akbar kabir, or Alhamdulillah kathira, or sometimes he could say Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tayyib. He has a choice. Imagine somebody who doesn't even notice. He doesn't even notice. Believe him. Nah. He doesn't know one du'a. The other one knows it's a difference. He's more aqil. He has a choice. He has more options. Nah. He knows when he's traveling that he can shorten the salah. He knows when he's traveling he can combine the salah. Imagine if somebody doesn't know that he's traveling. He's like, oh, I got to stop and make the salah. Oh, it's difficult. Ah, he doesn't know. Nah. The more knowledge that you have, the more you use your aqil, the more you benefit, the more you grow. In your religion, nah. we want to look at a couple of ayats, two ayats that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala compares and mentions and com- mentions together, parallel mentions together knowledge with the aqil. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Yutil hikmata man yasha." Al hikma is knowledge. He gives hikma to whoever who wills. Whoever he wills, he gives them hikma. When man yutil hikma. فقد أوتي خيرا كثيرا. And whoever has been given knowledge, hikma, he's been given a lot of good. وما يذكر إلا أول الألباب. No one contemplates about this except أول الألباب. Except to have sound understanding. You need knowledge in order to live in the life of this world, in order to be successful in the life of this world, and in the after. ما أحوجك. Knowledge. How much in need you are of knowledge. Allah compares the two together. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Qul 
لا يستوي الذين قل لا يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعد والذين لا يعلمون إنما يتذكر أول الألباب. Say it's not the same. Those who know and those who don't know, and no one contemplates about this إلا أول الألباب except the people of sound understanding. So every time somebody's knowledge grows, his intellect grows, his understanding grows, nah? and he acts accordingly. It's not just in the salah, meaning in the way he conducts himself with that which is halal and tayyib and wajib and good. And even, even staying away from the haram and that which is harmful and that which is detrimental. He has his eyes open, he uses it well. Now, because of that, people yet to fail with. People vary in their aql. And they vary in their deen. So we want to look at these couple of hadiths here. And we're going to end with that. How people vary in their religion because of their aql. And because of they, what they take from Islam and they use it. They have knowledge. They use it with their intellect. Some people use their intellect and they think how to do the haram. They think cleverly. You have somebody who knows how to make fitna between two people. Say, so, yeah, I'm going to go to him. And I'm going to say, yo, he was looking at you funny. And I, don't, I don't think you should trust him. I think that, you know, he's trying to do something to you. And you have the other people who use their intellect to bring two people back together. He said, listen, I think the brother, I think he feels sorry about that. I think you should try to work out. I think, you know, it, just the opposite. Uh-uh. Tayyip, let's look at these people here. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قلت يا رسول الله من حديث أبي سعيد الخدري أي الناس أشد بلاء Which people have the hardest of tests Trials and tribulations and difficulties In the life of this world Who has the hardest trials and tribulations Abu Sa'id is not asking this Except he's intellectual He's getting the understanding of life Not a simple question He's asking the Prophet أي الناس أشد بلاء Which people have the hardest tests the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ala al-anbiya The prophets Qultu thumma man I said who's after them Ala as-salihun The righteous after them Qal in kana ahaduhum La yubtala bil-faqr Some of them they're tested with poverty They don't have anything to wear Until at the end of the hadith We're in a shortened time So I'm just going to mention the, the end of the hadith The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Qal Wa in kana ahaduhum لَا يَفْرَحُ بِالْبَلَى كَمَا يَفْرَحْ أَحَدُكُمْ بِالْرَّخَاءِ إيش في هؤلاء الرجال يا إخوة ما دالهم إلا عندهم عقول Really one of them would rejoice and be happy with hard times and trials and tribulations just like one of you would rejoice with comfort and ease and luxury What do they have to make them do that? Ah, they have a greater understanding than you. Naam. And that's yet the fair with two and people vary. Because they use their intellect. They know. And Allah is wiping away my sins. After this difficulty, it's going to come ease. He already sees it before it comes. How many times have we been trial? We've been tested with hardships. And we forget every time I've been in a hardship, Allah got me out of it. We forget. Naam. Look at another hadith. This, before we look at this hadith, let's imagine in this religion of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows on al-qatl al-amd, intentional murder, first degree murder, you have the right to forgive the one that killed your father, or killed your son, or killed your brother. You have the right to forgive. What would make you forgive? What would make you forgive him? What make you What what would even make you look that way? That you're gonna forgive somebody who intentionally killed your brother, intentionally killed your sister. Why why Allah calls to that? Not everybody can do that. Not everybody can do it. Look at the hadith of Khabab in Arat. قال شكونا إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هو متوسدة بردة له في ذل الكعبة الخباب المؤرد there in Mecca and the مشركون this is before they make hijra and the مشركون and one of the narration قال ولقينا ذاك اليوم شدة 
they met from the mushrikeen hardship and they chastised them and they punished them. So they came to the Prophet complaining to him the hardship that they caught and he is mutawassidatun burudatan. He's using a piece of cloth, he's leaning on it as a pillow in the shade of the Kaaba, relaxing. And they come and they're complaining to him. Allah Rasulullah they're saying, Allah to stun surulana, Allah to do ulana. They say to the Masjid, won't you ask Allah to have some hope? Won't you make dua for us? Man, hard times. All this doesn't faze the Messenger of Allah. He's, he's not faze, he's not surprised. Aqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kana rajulu fi man kana qablukum. There were people that came from before you, from the people of Musa, Bani Israel. Yuhfaralahu fil al alayhi wa sallam. They used to dig a hole for him in the land. Wa yuj'alu fi ra'sihi. They will put him in the hole. And they will come with a saw. They will put the saw on top of his head. It would split his head in half, two halves. With that, he would not leave Islam. He would not leave his religion. Mala. Why don't he just, just say, cause I, 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 I leave Islam and, and just save himself. What, 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 what does he understand? Ah, and that's your tafawatun. People vary in their aql and in their iman. The more aql they have, the more intellect, the more knowledge they have, it affects their religion. After that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَيُمْشَتُ بِأَمْشَاطِ الْحَدِيدِ بَادُونَ لَحْمِهِ وَعَظْمِ وَعَصَبِ they come with combs that have teeth in it made of, of steel, made of iron. And they wipe it across their legs, inside of their bones, inside of their meat, and inside of their nerves. That doesn't stop him from holding on to his religion whatsoever. What's wrong with these people? Why are they so strong? What made them like this? They use their intellect, their knowledge. Knowledge of the hereafter. Nah. Or last... Hadith that we want to mention tonight. Wa a narration on Jubair ibn Nufir. When the Muslims were victorious over this land and they conquered this land called Qubrus. And the people were separated. The men were killed. The women were taken. The children were taken. And people were separated. And the people ended up crying. These are disbelievers. They ended up crying. The Muslims conquered them. I saw Abu Darda on the side by himself crying. And the Muslims conquered them. I said, Oh, Abu Darda, what is wrong with you? What's making you cry on the day that Allah honored Islam and its people? And he humiliated disbelief and its people. He said, Woe well, upon you. And in the narration, he said, may, I, may your mother be bereaved of you. I mean, this is a silly question that you're asking me. Why I'm on the side crying on the day that Allah made us victorious? قال يا جبير ما أهون الخلق على الله إذا هم تركوا أمرا وإذا عصبوا أمرا How insignificant mankind is to Allah if they disobey Him. How insignificant they are if they disobey Allah. بينما هي أمة ظاهرة قائرة While these people was an أمة, a nation, they were on top, they were in charge, they had control. They, had, they owned everything. They left the commandments of Allah. And they ended up just like what you see right there. They're separated. The men got killed. The women are separated from their children. And so why is Abu Darda crying? He's crying. He's crying before time for the Muslims. So we're going to be the same way if we disobey Allah. He's crying before time. Not that this is going to happen after next year. Maybe after, after 200 years. He's crying before time. He's the most intelligent, the most wise. As he uses intelligence. 
ان شاء الله انا عفوا هذا يعني يبكي على على المسلمين مقدما هذا سبب هو يبكي يعني المسلمين قد ظهروا وقهروهم وقتلوهم وهو على الجنب يبكي ليس هو يبكي يرى ان المسلمين اذا عصبوا ربهم سيصيروا مثل هذا نعم هذا درسنا اليوم ان شاء الله غدا هو الجمعه ما سندرس غدا ان شاء الله وان شاء الله بعد ان شاء الله يوم الاثنين نواصل في هذا الكتاب وكتير يوم امام منك سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك